Guys, in this video, we're going to talk about the current state of foreclosure. Recently, we had a podcast with a real estate attorney, and he said that the state of foreclosures really boils down to one thing and one thing only. How far will property values decline as that will force the bank's hand to take the property? Okay, Melissa, so after we had a pretty lengthy show with Dave Thurston, the real estate attorney, you know, we were kind of talking about foreclosures and really what's the state of the foreclosure right now, as he has done many foreclosure sales and probably did thousands of them back in the 2008 crisis. Now, Dave talked about the current default rate right now at being about 4%, which is still about half of what we saw at the beginning of the pandemic. And we know that the federal government during that time has just printed money and pumped stimulus into the economy. And he said in a prior podcast from about a year ago that America will wake up with a hangover from all of this stimulus. So here we are. I mean, we are walking into which could quite possibly be a huge spike in foreclosures. Now, Dave did mention it is too early to tell at this point in time, but we are going to be able to see specifically what's going on here probably in the next six months. You know, one of the things that he said was that the key element to whether we'll see massive foreclosures, because let's face it, I mean, banks don't want to foreclose on a property. They're not in the real estate business. They don't want to own the property. They simply want to finance the property and have the borrowers pay it as agreed. So I think it's going to be more likely or not that the banks will continue to work out some type of forbearance or some type of individual repayment of the mortgage to work with the borrower so long as they're trying at least to pay their mortgage payment. And one of the things that I asked him was, you know, did we really learn anything through the foreclosure process of the 2008 crisis? And he said that actually it may take longer for banks to foreclose now. I think he said that it could take about two years for a bank to foreclose on the property because he had mentioned that the White House didn't want to see foreclosures. You know, when I first started practicing, you could foreclose in Baltimore City in four months, probably two years now, at least two 18 years from months. start to finish to foreclose. Well, because, you, you know, you, 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 you can't, you, you're going to ruffle feathers in Washington if you send a first payment default letter. So used and to then be, try get, getting them out. The servicers are under tremendous pressure from the White House and the CFPB not to put the foreclosures in the market right now. I don't think we'll see a lot or any more than usual going forward. That would be my guess. And then we'd also talked about once the bank actually foreclosed, it could take another couple of years to actually get them out. So I think it's clear to see that foreclosure just may not be the bank's best option. I think it's really going to come down to the price decreases. I know for myself, just I got an email yesterday from Redfin and it was stacked price decreases in my local area. So if that continues to happen, that's where it's going to be a scary situation because the mortgage is going to be more than what the home is worth. Yeah, Melissa, he did say, I mean, one of the things that would force the bank's hand at taking the property back or starting the foreclosure is if the property values do tumble beneath what is actually owed on the house. That puts the bank in a very tough spot where they need to step in and recover any losses before things get worse. The banks would much rather, if the, if the price is on that top, the prices don't hold, the banks have to foreclose because or the servicer has to foreclose because the servicing agreement only gives them a certain amount of time to work it out, right? So if the prices don't hold, it'll force their hand. If the prices hold and there's equity, they're more patient. So if prices are declining and the bank's hand is forced, that really is going to depend on how bad the market is going to get. And you and Dave had a difference of opinion on that. We did. And, you know, as I said, you know, in our video, I mean, really, Dave is maybe kind of a little bit more optimistic than I am. And that may just simply be because of his position as a real estate attorney and title company. They see things more on the back end. We see what's happening more as troops on the ground, the front end. You know, we're hearing the conversations. We're seeing the buyers pull back. You know, he's seeing it once a contract has been, you know, accepted between a buyer and seller, no matter what the price is. So I think that, you know, uh, based on the next couple months, we're going to see what happens, certainly as we get through the holiday season, you know, over the next two Fed meetings, you know, will interest rates continue to rise? If they do, this is going to push 
home prices down if sellers want to sell. And I think that as we're seeing now with Main Street Media now starting to have, you know, articles that are headlining just this week, you know, where we could be looking now at another 2008 similar housing crisis. I think that people are realizing that we may be in a little bit more of a difficult situation than we first expected. But I do want to talk about, you know, the price declines, Melissa, because a lot of people and a lot of the comments are saying that they won't buy until they see prices drop 40, 50, 60%. I still don't think we're going to see that. I do think we may see that in distressed property. And as we're tying what we're saying to foreclosures for the purpose of this video, when people can't pay their mortgage, they aren't fixing things. So I kind of want to take a step back. I mean, you know, before the pandemic, you know, life happens, you know, we've seen a certain percentage of foreclosures every single year. You know, people lose their jobs, people have medical conditions, health issues that take their cash, their, you know, they fall behind in their payments for whatever reason, they go into default. And then the bank, if they can't cure the default, is forced to start foreclosure proceedings. We haven't seen any of that for the last several years. And and, you know, because we have pumped so much stimulus into this economy, guys, we can't be ignorant to that. We have to remember the way things were, where if people couldn't pay their mortgage payment, you know, and you have a certain percentage every year that, that this happens to, we're having a buildup of this, you know, and whether they change how, what they call default in mortgage, whether the banks continue to work something out because they don't want to take the property back at some point, these properties may not be getting repairs made. They may be declining in, you know, the safety, whether they can even safely be lived in. Maybe these houses of people that are in default, you know, maybe they're not fixing their heating and air system. It may not be working at all. There could be mold growing in the house from a roof leak. And I think that once we finally shake out or wake up from what we've, you know, seen or the stimulus that we've pumped, any homes going into foreclosure, those properties could certainly decline 40 50, 60% based on their condition and someone else's ability to buy it. I mean, let's look at the past two years here. People were buying over value in the home using all of their cash. And then unfortunately, some of those people are going to be losing their jobs. So they're not going to have any money banked to be able to make these repairs, which is it's scary to think about. Yeah, I think they said, you know, in the height of the peak that nationwide people were spending an average of $50,000 over list price for the home, again, across the country. And a lot of this was over appraised value. So they were bringing their cash, their parents' cash as gift money to the table in order to buy the house. You know, these people, People, yeah, they could they could certainly, I mean, I would hope that this is a lot of our first time buyer uh, population and maybe they're going to be a little bit more resilient. Maybe their benefit is that they're, they're young and that, you know, they can still recover any financial loss through the years. Um, even bankruptcy won't take them out. Uh, but the main thing is, you know, I think based on the attorney's opinion was that on average, it will take people again, two years to be foreclosed on. It may be another couple of years, depending on how deep the court backlog is at that point before they could take the house back. And in 2008, that's what happened, Melissa. I had mentioned my recollection of 2008 isn't just about the liar loans, the people buying that shouldn't buy or have qualified for a loan. My recollection of 2008 was that everybody was getting into the real estate business, sort of like we saw leading up to the peak. You know, people were buying investment properties, people were buying second homes. Um, we saw that during COVID, buying vacation homes. More and more people were getting into Airbnb because the economy was booming, right? Mm -hmm. And people were traveling again and things like that. Well, what's going to happen when all that comes crashing to a halt like it is now? So, you know, the similarities of 08 where people were extending themselves, you know, using short-term debt, high credit card loans, and then we had a recession where we had major job loss, but people just stopped paying their mortgages because, and even people that could, because a lot of people just looked as an opportunity to save and bank a lot of cash 
you know, that they're realizing their neighbor's house is worth $150,000 less than their home. And they're like, why should I continue to pay my mortgage? Nobody else is. And we just continue to bail out the situation, you know, not deal with the situation, but just bail out the situation. If there's no consequences for our actions, Melissa, history has a tendency of repeating itself. And to try and put some hope into this scenario, I mean, if you're in a situation where you fall into financial hardship and you could be looking at foreclosure, you may just have to, you know, make some life changes. You know, you may have to start selling the things that you don't need that are, I mean, the clothes that are hanging out in the closet that you don't wear. I mean, there are a lot of sites that can put some extra cash in your pocket by liquidating those unnecessary items. And you may need to get some type of a side hustle going. You know, maybe your gifts are you're an artist and you can paint caricatures and put them online. I mean, maybe you need to step it up at work. You know, maybe you need to go to your employer and say, look, how do I make more money? You know, can I do some you know, extra things? We are resilient. We're Americans and we will find a way through. Hell yes, absolutely. That's what we do. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. If you liked it, you can hit the thumbs up. It will let Melissa and I know that you did. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Hit the alert bell if you haven't already done so. And we appreciate when you share our channel with your family and friends. As always, keep those comments and questions coming. We love reading them. We love responding to them. See you next time. See you next time. Sachs Realty, Maryland Broker, number 607720, office number 443-318-4514, equal housing opportunity.